Zelensky and Biden again, but there is a clock that's ticking, which is, you know, Washington's ability to deliver aid for Israel and Ukraine. How dissipated is the appetite to give additional Ukraine aid? How much of a battle does Zelensky have on his hands? He has a huge battle. He's running short of ammunition. He's running at a sort of short of supplies of cash. The Europeans are giving him some, but there are, there is, there's resistance there too. In the U.S., the Biden administration is essentially being held hostage by the Republicans um, over talks about the border in the United States, and they, the Republicans, yeah. are basically pegging their support for Ukraine to a far more divisive topic, which is border. And uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a very difficult which week Biden for Biden. Biden himself has said that he's prepared to, 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 make, to make negotiation on and, yes. and sizable negotiation. Yes, so this will be a week where we, we hopefully get to see some meat on the bones of that mm -hmm. statement. He said that he's willing to make some concessions. What exactly is he prepared to give? And will that be enough for the Republicans? If uh, history is anything to go by, uh, they will always want to ask for more. The question is, will they untie the purse strings for Ukraine in the meantime? enough to give Ukraine something through to go to survive through the winter. At this very moment, while this is going on in Washington and while Ukraine uh, is low on surprise, Russia is turning up the dial. Russia has had uh, mm. a difficult uh, summer, uh, but its supplies seem to have now uh, gotten to a point where its attacks on uh, Ukrainian territory with drones and missiles is ratcheting up. So it's a, it's a really, really sensitive moment that Ukraine comes to, I beg your pardon, that Zelensky comes to Washington. He desperately needs and much more American support. And, and not to mention the, the sensitivity of, of Viktor Orban, hung, Hungary's president, yeah. uh, also heading to Washington, getting an audience with Republicans. What do you make of that, Bobby? Well, yes, um, Orban is here. He is, he is uh, already holding up European Euro Union supplies to uh, Ukraine because uh, his country is a member of the European Union. But he's here to try and persuade Republicans to keep uh, pushing back against the Biden administration to restrict uh, the supply of American uh, aid. Orban is very close to Vladimir Putin. He's a, he's a right-wing populist. He has a lot of admirers within uh, the Republican Party, and he will be essentially caucusing with the Republicans. I mean, this is really quite an astonishing idea that Somebody from Eastern Europe, Eastern European leaders, someone who has taken strong anti-American positions in the past, someone who's very close to Vladimir Putin, clearly an enemy of the United States, is coming to Washington and is going to caucus with members of the Republican Party against American interests. The fact that he can do this at this moment tells us something about how broken American politics is. But to uh, Zelensky and Ukraine's mm -hmm. uh, point of view, that's why it's all the more important for Zelensky to be here for that photo op with Biden to try and fight back against that kind of pressure. And, and certainly on the Sunday programming that I watched yesterday, it was, you know, this is a moment where Putin, if he feels emboldened, he may well, uh, you know, take more of Ukraine. And then NATO has a much bigger issue if the U.S. is seen to have not done the right thing. Yeah. Look, let's just talk briefly. The one thing that I did notice was not covered very much in the Sunday shows was the United States, uh, you know, vetoing against the demand for a ceasefire. Britain abstained. Yeah. The United States of America vetoed against a ceasefire. This was put on the table by the Emiratis. Yes. Supported by 100 nations. Um, what does that say? Well, it's consistent with Biden's uh, full embrace of Israel and uh, his sort of support for Israel against Hamas. But it's to the, in the International Court of Public Opinion, if you like, yes. this cements the idea that this is Biden's war as much as it is Bibi Netanyahu's war. And, and there is a, 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 a price to pay in terms of international opinion. Uh, Biden... Uh, is consistent is being consistent to his own word. He mm. said that the United States would back uh, Israel to the hint, to the hilt. On the side, in the background, his officials have been trying to get Israel to go easier on the Palestinians, um, to to make sure that this second phase of the offensive is not as devastating, does not take as great a human toll and particularly a toll on Palestinian civilians as the first phase did. But in when it comes, when push comes to shove, when it comes to things like 
um, resolutions in the United States. Biden's demonstrating that he's fully behind Israel. That, that only, as I said, that only confirms in the minds of a lot of people around the world, certainly in the Arab world, but elsewhere, mm -hmm. that the, this is Biden's war as much as it is Israel's. Mm -hmm.